Welcome back. We're going to darken the shadows under our berries using the large brown brush and some raw umber. Just scrub this in and soften the edges out. With some more alizarin crimson, we're going to darken the shadows on the berries along the left side and bottoms and fill in some of these little um, wave areas where we have some indentions in the berries. Be sure to use some of the glazing or blending mix on your brush just to keep that paint moving very easily and Keep the open time so you can blend it out as needed. Using our brown brush and burnt umber, we're going to darken the shadows on the strawberry. I've got blending mix in the brush and then picked up a little burnt umber and I'm going to scrub this into the darkest areas of shadows. You can wipe the brush and then just soften the edges of the shadow. You can scrub a little bit of the burnt umber also down into the shadows under the berries again. This is just a continuous process of reinforcing shadows. I'm going to lighten up the foreground a little bit more between the berries. So I'm going to pick up a little bit of our, our pinks and a little bit of the raw sienna and just scrub this down into the front area of the canvas. I first used a round brush and now I'm using a small flat to just work this out and blend it into the previous layers. Pick up a little more raw sienna to warm that up. You don't want it to get too chalky. We just want to call a little bit of attention to this foreground. We add some of the reds into the foreground in front of the berries. Berries, it gives like a reflection onto the surface and repeats our red colors into the background.
Just keep working these colors out, spreading them around. If you add a little bit of alizarin crimson plus some of the green, which are complementary colors, you can create, create a real dark value to add some more shadows. Plus, we'll repeat our leaf colors into the background a little bit. Adding these different colors just adds some more interest. You can just keep working back and forth, blending these colors together. And as long as you have a little bit of the blending mix in your brush, it will help extend the drying time so you can blend these. So I'm just working back and forth, picking up, trying to lighten, but also add some of these colors. Just keep scrubbing and softening out. I'm trying to go dark on the corners and a little lighter towards the center. Again, keep those shadows dark on the left side of the berries. I want to darken to the left of the basket, so I'm mixing some raw umber, burnt umber, and some of the green. And I'm going to come along the left side and just work this in and darken this shadow. Again, our light, light source is from the upper right, and so we want to create these darkest shadows to the left of our objects. And the colors lighten as they dry, so that's why I often have to add a layer, let it dry, and then reassess it and decide if I want to darken it more. Here I'm just adding a little bit more of this red reflection next to the small barrier. Berry. It just adds interest to the background so it's not just this plain dark browns. We've got the reds, some greens, and some of the raw sienas 
mixed into this background. And these brighter colors bring your eye down here into the center of interest. Okay, we're dry and I'm using, back to my round brush, I've added water to it so I can make up this kind of wet mixture of burnt umber. And I want to darken the shadows on the strawberry again. We're moving up here to the back strawberry, just running that along the bottom edge. And then I'm going to wipe my brush and just soften that out a little bit. We want to keep this again a transparent glaze of color over our previous shadows. We just want to add another layer of darkness. You can add some of that into the shadow to the left of this berry by darkening the basket and creating this little cast shadow. I find it easier sometimes to turn my board when I'm working to a, an angle that's easier for me to apply the paint. There's not a lot of paint on my brush, but just enough to add, just continue to refine the shadows a little bit. We still want our red, the red of the berries to show through this burnt umber. Just wiping, cleaning my brush a, just a little bit. I'm not cleaning all the dirty paint out of it, just wetting it and wiping it a little bit more. I'll pick up a, a little bit of this raw sienna and there's a little bit of white in the paint too there in the next to my puddle and I want to lighten this shadow in this little crack in the corner of the basket just to show a little bit of the light shining down from the right side and hitting under this this edge of the basket. We'll take another shot at darkening the shadows under the berry with some raw umber and along the bottom edge of the basket. If 
We just have to keep refining our values as the layers dry and we reassess what it looks like, the lightness or darkness of an area compared to the adjacent areas. Now I'm going to start filling in some of our leaves with a, a green mix. I'm using the phthalo green yellow, a little bit of the Indian yellow, and a touch of white. I'm just color booking these in for the moment. You can vary the mix so that the leaves are different, just a little different values. You don't want them all exactly the same. Add a little more yellow to some. You can add a little bit more of the dark green or a little more white. For a darker value, you can just add a touch of the burnt umber into the green mix. Just continue working and fill in the remaining leaves on your berries. And once they're all in, we can start refining them a little bit. I'm adding a little bit of the alizarin and crimson into our green to create a, a dark value, which I'm going to use to start shading and defining some of these leaves. Putting a little water into the brush just to make it go on a little more water in a more watercolor fashion that I can soften out. I'm just working in some dark values to define and separate the leaves. Again, we're doing the shadows here on the left side, away from the light source. On this strawberry, we're kind of looking straight into the top where all the leaves spread out and there's a little indention here where the stem, of, stem comes into the top of the berry. That's what this little ring that we're working around is.
So we're darkening these leaves on this strawberry on the left side, which is away, away from our light source. And we'll have the leaves to the right side just a little lighter. I want to reinforce the shadow between the strawberries a little. So I'm just putting a glaze of the green between that and also on this back edge of the berry to darken the shadow. And again, since the green's a complement of the red, when you add the two together, a glaze of one of the, over the other, it creates a darker value. just soften the edge of that little touch of green out. You can re repeat a touch of this green in the shadows on the other berries. We want to work on some highlights on the leaves, so I'm using a little bit of white and Indian yellow and a very small touch of green. We're just working up a, a very light yellow-green color. Again, using the round brush, I'm just going to start touching some highlights on these leaves. So I lay a little line of the, the light value down, wipe my brush, and then soften it out. I want to add a little stronger shadow on this one. Just to separate it from the berry. Just continue to add some highlights to the edges of the leaves. You can vary the color of the light value you add, making some a little more yellow, some a little more, just a soft green. I'm 
going to reinforce the shadows on some of these leaves by adding a little bit of the burnt umber. Again, as I said, things, once they dry, they soften down and I see where I need to reinforce shadows and highlights. I'm going to darken the shadows here underneath these leaves with some raw umber. I'm 
and then with some burnt ember plus the raw ember continue darkening some of the, le the leaves. We're running this mostly along the left side of the leaves. You can add this again to your shadows under the leaves on the background. I'm just adding a little of the phthalo green yellow to shade the leaves on this little strawberry. With some of our alizarin crimson and a touch of the red, I'm going to go over these shadows on this front berry one more time to brighten them up. So I've laid down a little bit, added a little bit of water to my brush and blotted it. And then I'm going to just soften that color out. I'll just add a little brighter touch to that berry. Back to our lighter leaf value of Indian yellow plus some green in our little puddle that we've been mixing here. You can add a touch of white to lighten it up. We're going to go back and add some reinforcing highlights on our leaves. As I said, this is just layer after layer. Applying a layer, letting it dry, working adjacent areas, then going back and reassessing and deciding where you would need more highlights or shadows. This color we're using is a little bit warmer, a warmer green, so that it's adding some little bright, bright touches of color to the leaves. Using a small round brush and mixing some raw umber and some of the phthalo green yellow. I'm going to paint in some of the detail on the basket. This first is the little shadow line where the two sides of the basket band meet.
With the same dark value, we're going to reinforce the shadows at this corner opening. We had lightened it earlier to let this to show the light shining through from the right side. But now we just want to crisp up the edges. Same way with the other little shadows. Here I'm just darkening the shadow under the top edge of this basket. Again, just reinforcing shadows. I'm scrubbing it in with this little round brush using this dark mix that we've been using. That was um, raw umber plus a little bit of the phthalo green. It makes sort of a blackish color. I want to mix up a light value to do some highlights on the basket. So I'm using some of the Indian yellow, a little white, and we're working here on the edge of our yellow, our raw sienna puddle. And I've added a little bit of water to this so that it comes off the brush very easily. We're just going to do some little sharp highlights along the front edge of the basket rim. So I'm just lining along the edge where the sun or the light might be hitting it. This is on a solid line, it's kind of um, just broken, hit and miss, because of the edge of these baskets aren't real new and sharp. They're, you know, it's old and worn and may have some little rough edges, so you don't want a real even line. To repeat colors, I'm going to add a little bit of the same light mix to some edges of our leaves. Just again to reinforce the highlight where the light's hitting.
mixing up a warm green of the phthalo green, some Indian yellow. I just want this kind of bright. You can add a touch of white and then we're going to paint in the stem on this back strawberry. It's just a curved line that's coming down into the center of the strawberry leaves. Add a little more yellow. Just want it to stand out a little bit from the the leaves and the strawberry, so it should be a little bit brighter. And add a little bit of this bright color to the edges of the leaves on the highlight side. And scrub a little bit around the center little dimple where the stem attaches. Just want to soften this so it looks like it's the leaves and the little dimple all are kind of connecting. So we're bringing that little highlight color out and connecting it to the highlights on the leaves. I want to reinforce some of the shadows on this back leaf cap, so I'm just touching in a little bit of raw umber. Just darkening some of the shadows where the stem attaches. I want to highlight the stem one more time with some white. We really want this little stem to stand out from the basket and leaves and the berry. So we need that highlight strong. And just again scrubbing some stronger highlights on these leaves on the, the right side. We want these lighter than those on the left side just because that's where our stronger light source is. back and reinforce the highlights on this right berry leaves with some white. I'm just doing a little fine outline on the highlight side. You can smudge a little wider highlight on some of these. Clean your brush out with a little water and then soften the edges down.
I'm going to add a little Indian yellow glaze to the edge of this berry to add a little touch of sunlight to it and bring it forward from the berry behind it. I've got a little blending mix on my brush to keep it transparent and make it give it a little extended drying time. And I add just a touch of white to brighten it up a little more and then pull some of this over into the highlights around the seeds. Clean your brush a little bit and just soften the edges. And pick up some white and a touch of the, the red or pink mix that we've got on our palette and create some stronger highlights in the lightest area of the berry where the light's hitting. We want these to be almost white but with just a hint of pink. These are going to be our strongest values of highlights on the berry. Do the same thing on this berry to the back. And we're keeping these strongest highlights closer to the right half of the berry where our light source is coming from. You can add a few to the left, but just keep them softer and near the top. I want to add a transparent layer of some Indian yellow over some of these leaves just to warm them up, soften down our, our white highlights. So you just, I'm using the brown brush with some blending mix in the brush and then some Indian yellow. And because it's so transparent, you can see the highlights through, but it gives just a golden glow to the greens. Brush a little of this around some of the berries, too, where you want to add some warmer colors. It'll soften down some of the these strong highlights. I'll keep brushing 
the leaves with some different values of green just to give some variations in color and brighten or soften the shading and highlighting. So I'm brushing a little bit of our, our light warm green mix over those. If you want to lighten it a little more just add a touch of white. So you can keep noodling with your leaves, adding shadows and highlights, and then we'll come back to part four and finish up.